Hello, my name is Gary Mansfield and this is the Ministry of Arts podcast where each week I'll be speaking to a different artist. Now let's begin by bagging these bongos. Welcome to episode 212 of the Ministry of Arts podcast. As you may be able to hear, I've got a bit of a sore throat, so this intro won't be too long. Firstly, as ever, a big thank you goes out to our Patreon supporters, without whom we would not be able to produce this podcast. And if you think you'd like to help support this podcast, you can do so for as little as £3 a month, and there'll be a little message at the end of the podcast to tell you how to do so. Well, today I'm properly chuffed to have Elizabeth Power on the podcast. I've known Elizabeth for a few years now, and she wears many a descriptive hat, I can tell you. She's a musician, she's a painter. She's also one half of the Artfully podcast, along with Jesse Wilcox. Well, in this episode we speak about the return of the Artfully podcast, because I for one have missed it, that's for sure. We also speak of the pros and cons of Elizabeth moving from northwest London to the south coast, which, as you can imagine, the the pros far outweigh the cons. I can't even remember if there was any cons, to be honest. It may have have just been locality to galleries, I think. We also speak of the art group that she... I can't remember whether she founded it or co-founded it, but it's called Babes in Arms, which, well, is pretty much what it says. And we round off by speaking about some of the shows she's got coming up. The nearest being a day or so after this episode is released, which is called Coastal Calm at 99 Projects, who are over in Kensal Rise and are very good friends of the podcast. So I'm going to leave it there before my voice totally collapses. So please, come with me and meet Elizabeth Power. How are you? Good? I'm all right, yeah. Nice and sunny day, finally. And how are you getting on down there? Yeah, I'm good. I love it. It's like, oh, it's been about f- over three years now, actually, since we've been out of London. But um, yeah. How come you chose to go down there? We came down here. Well, we had a lot of mates already that were that we knew from London that had come down yeah. here with kids. And they're all very, like, you know, creative, sort of like minded people that we thought would be good to hang out with and then I just knew if they were here that there was going to be you know lots of similar people and um wanting to be by the sea and I grew up in the southeast anyway so it was kind of easy to I knew a lot it's kind of close to a lot of my family as well yeah. so it kind of makes sense yeah I went down to St Leonard's for the first time about four years ago or so amazing it's, it's a gorgeous place isn't it it's so it's so special it's just like it, the, the place is gorgeous but the people are great yeah and that's what I love about it like it's just it's a real community but like full of very similar people <laughs> like it's it's all like one big town but St Leonard's is kind of like the cool London-ish bit. Do you think the light down there is helps in your paintings or is it irrelevant because you're painting indoors? Oh no it definitely helps like my studio is on the first floor and I'm sort of the two roads back from the from the sea so yeah there's incredible light in here and it definitely helps for sure because before my studio was just like on the top floor of this building Kilburn and just yeah it didn't it definitely didn't feel like it had the same light <laughs> it probably did, but yeah I definitely feel like um there's better quality here for sure and because your painting has got it's got a seaside feel about it anyway even if it isn't even if it's a still life living by the sea in St Leonard it's, it's got a come out onto the canvas hasn't it oh my god absolutely I've never been more inspired by a place really um it's just constantly fueling what I do and kind of comes out in in every painting I think like obviously because I moved here before lockdown actually but then that meant for a long time I couldn't go on holiday or get away so I, I feel like I really focused and honed into where I was living and it just felt like to be honest it feels like I don't even need to go away when I'm here it's Brilliant. like like living on holiday so I try and like really capture that in a lot of what I do and a lot of the like the all the building references that you know I paint from are all are all in St Leonard's and Hastings predominantly anyway um and the seascapes are all here and but I'll often you know 
I'll play around with the colors and make them really abstract and you know people can see what they want to see in it like most of the time people think it's like I don't know Italy or Morocco or whatever you know and that's that's cool as well um I like being able to to me I know where it is but I, I will deliberately um play around with it so that people can kind of see what they want to see and escape to the place in their mind that they find relaxing well that's pretty much summed up my first question before I even asked it is <laughs> is how would how would um how would you explain what you do to someone that doesn't know your art sure yeah no I mean basically I try and um I, I I'm I would definitely say I'm a colorist like I really that's my like number one yeah thing I love playing with color and um I'll, I'll just seeing which which series of colors work well together and make, make them pop but I'll try and I just try and transform what I'm working the reference I'm working from um into how I want to see it really so it's, it could be a really gray day in in March in England or it could be uh I don't know it could, if I'm doing like a still life it might just be in my house but then I'll and the light, lighting will not, might not be so good but I'll try and make it how I want to see it and I, I guess evidently I want to see things in yeah in bring the, a bit of the Mediterranean into yeah, St Leonard's um <laughs> and, and bring that that to what I do like I, I would definitely say for me art is an optimistic thing and an escapism thing and um I don't want to look at like I don't know like like you know life is for me is pretty relentless right now with two small children and I mean I love my life but it's like for me art is like a break from that and I want to um, and I like being able to provide that for other people and like having you know it should be I, I don't think there's any shame at all in like decorative positive high you know happy art yeah. music um Grayson Perry said the same thing once and I really it really resonated with me like it doesn't have to be pretentious it doesn't have to be serious it doesn't have to be but it's great that there's all of that as well but for me personally that's not how I enjoy painting yeah, you're just expanding on reality anyway. I mean, there's an artist I know who goes the opposite way slightly. He'll find he'll look for the detritus in something, yeah. you know, and, and he's not that sort of person in his personality, you know. Right. He's a very happy and positive person. Did you have creativity in the home growing up? Yes, I did. Um, so my mum was an art therapist um, and I was always surrounded by art and constantly making art. And my dad, not for his living, but he was a jazz musician. So I was kind of always around. And I'm, I'm a musician as well. It's a big part of my life, music. So um, very much so, yeah. I've always been surrounded by creativity and been very lucky. Like I grew up, I actually grew up very much in like the Surrey suburbs um, where everyone was very narrow-minded and not very, um, not a very creative place, I would say. But um, so I could probably stock out like a sore thumb. But thank you. My <laughs> the well, weird kid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, you just have to do the tiniest thing and you just get branded alternative. <laughs> Maybe five or ten was enough to make the alternative a little bit different. Yeah, um, bohemian because you've got a daisy in your hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But my parents weren't like that. They're, they're quite liberal and creative. So, yeah, I, my home was, was, was definitely creative, even if the surroundings weren't, I would say. You was in a band, wasn't you? Yeah, I've been in many, yeah. <laughs> many bands over and the years. What's the most notable? Um, I was in a band called Ligers for years. That was like my kind of main project that I did in my 20s. A good name from, which comes from the Napoleon Dynamite film was the, the name reference there. Nice. Uh, and, but yeah, various, there was the Argonauts, uh, High Safari. Um, uh, who else? And was it always on brass that you was? No, no. I, so I did brass on the first two bands and then, but my band, I was, I'm a singer. So I, I was singer and guitar. Um, so predominantly, yeah, I'm just the, I'm just that front guy. <laughs> <laughs> and do you still do any of that, or just in the shower? Um, no, I actually am. I'm just starting up a new band again now. Um, which Man, yeah. where'd you get the time? I'm clearly a lunatic. No, it, for me, it's really important, and I've actually I've, I feel like I'm channeling a lot of like inner mum rage at the moment. So this is going to be quite a punky outlet, I think. This 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 guys that I'm working on at the moment. Um, it's hard, that isn't it? When you I, I know you said just as a little throwaway thing now. But it is hard being so expressive and then having to condense it in some way because of family life. It, it, so, and it, it makes you feel selfish saying it, Elizabeth, doesn't it, you know? Yeah, completely. Like, I constantly feel guilty for wanting my own time to be creative. But then it's like, if I do, I'm a better parent if I have it. Like, that, I am such a, a creative person. I really need 
that outlet it's like oh at least now I'm like well it's my job so <laughs> I need this time but with music I feel guilty with because it's like that's like that's my hobby I guess now yeah it used to be more my my whole life but now it's just but so i find finding time to do that i was like oh god can i can i you know give them to someone for a few hours <laughs> like i also i help run um there's a great choir down here called she choir hastings which i'm one of the leaders of and i do that that takes up quite a lot of my time and i feel bad about it but it's like but i need that and it's like a community and we're all supporting each other and those are the other people in the choir parents and um yeah it's cool i, I feel like i feel i have that release and then I'm like more with it when I'm with the kids. Yeah, brilliant. Um, th- was there a point that you decided you wanted to be an artist or did it just bleed into your life and, and always been there? Uh, I think it's always been there for sure. Um, I just think when I was younger, I think I didn't believe that I could do that as a career, like completely. Like I always wanted to, like, oh my God, yeah, if someone said you can make money and live off being an artist, I would have bitten the hand off. But I think because um, my parents, like, um like they're they're like I said they're both really creative but they did it in a work capacity and like I read that's why my degree is illustration because I thought oh okay but that seems like a bit more of a way of having like actually having jobs do you know what I mean like in a brief and be be creative but it was like it, it felt like there'd be more guaranteed work I was actually very wrong there wasn't more guaranteed work and I found it <laughs> and I just get really frustrated because I'd be like I do I spend so much time doing these drawings and then people would just like nitpick and like feel they had to throw their oar in and be like oh but can you just make particularly fashion illustration like can you just make this person a bit skinnier that arm a bit more up there like, no just take it as it is so basically that's that's why I do fine art now it's like just like bosh here's a painting do you want it cool and was that a decision to go into fine art or did it just work out that way it kind of worked out that way I basically yeah I did fashion illustration as for my degree but then I got very very quite quickly disillusioned with the fashion industry didn't want to be in it at all and then I was like well I love fine art I'm really painting is what I really like doing anyway so I kind of went back to what I always preferred doing but then I worked I just worked in the industry like London is so expensive that I couldn't afford to just be like right I'm just gonna try being an artist now and like (laughs) yeah I'll do that age like 21 and it just didn't I just didn't have you know some people are very fortunate they have family they can live with in London or whatever and they could, they could do it but um I wasn't in that situation. I wanted to be in London didn't want to move back to Surrey so I needed to work um so I just worked and I um had an amazing um fortuitous opportunity I basically just spammed loads of galleries and like I, can I be an intern please and one person that came back to me was this guy called Kenny Schachter who's quite a renowned character in the in the art world he's a dealer he's the gallery owner and critic and writer and stuff and he's a real character and he has at the time had a gallery called Rove Gallery which was in Hoxton Square it was really near White Cube yeah. it subsequently went when the White Cube did and the whole area kind of changed but he was just like yeah cool come come meet me and um anyway I had this like chat with him his house was just like amazing it just had like, all these ridiculously famous like, <laughs> you go in and it's like that's awful, like, just right in the hallway just like wow. oh, so I twombly, like, like, just in the freaking toilet. I was just like, oh, my God. And then, anyway, I went to this interview, and we were chatting, I was talking about, about my experience. She's like, yeah, 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 that's really cool. But can you play me that song on YouTube? Because I was like, wow. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, like, grabbed his kids, mates into the, inter- like, into the living room. He's like, play it now. And he the guitar at me. It's like, okay. So I just yeah. played the song. It's like, great, start Tuesday. <laughs> play all of the art openings, do everything. So, like, basically music was the reason I got into the art world it wasn't yeah. my degree no one's ever checked my qualifications ever um and anyway so then I just worked and, and worked for him and then I worked for a guy called Michael Hugh Williams and then I worked for Nelly Duff Gallery later on um just managing art galleries basically and uh for about a decade I think I did that and I just learned I learned the industry and like also because Kenny and Michael both of them together had like such an insane collection of artworks like just unbelievable I was constantly doing like the um cataloging for all of that and had to handling all these pieces so it was like the best education I probably could have had Brilliant. in art history like sod like doing a master's I was literally there physically you know like handling all these pieces and and also working and meeting all of these famous artists as well like because Michael's gallery was out in um Oxfordshire so I was constantly driving all these like really famous artists out and um having these amazing chats on the way so as difficult as it was in many ways working in that industry um it was great in the sense that I really learned how to um what I like also just how the how the business works I think so then when it got to the point of okay well let's leave London so we can be freelance and that's the main reason we both left 
it was like okay I'm ready now I know how to do this I know how to run run my business and which is so much of it it's obviously talent is important but like you have to be able to to know how to market yourself how to brand yourself just packaging artwork correctly and safely all of that kind of stuff yeah so I didn't yeah I basically had like almost a decade of um after art school of working in the industry and that's when I went to it and do you miss that side of it <laughs> no no you're not <laughs> tempted to open something up down there but for myself, yes. I don't want to work for someone again. Absolutely not. I don't want to have to manage people. Um, but I could, What my, my, my goal, my studio is in my house at the moment because um, it's just convenient with the kids, but and I've got quite a big studio here. But my goal in like a few years is to get like a big warehouse space down here. And then um, aside from my own stuff, just like use the space and like put gigs on in the space as well. Nice. Like put on, um, I don't know, like life drawing, that kind of stuff, yoga. So I kind of want to have a space which is mine, which I can use for other stuff. But I don't want to have to like manage other people's careers because I don't have time to do that. I just need to do my own. <laughs> Good, perfect answer. And also because I've got my the art collective here, like um, I feel like I do do a lot of um, sort of promotion for, for them and for us. And that's kind of, I want to have enough time to do that. So I don't think if I run... What's the name of that art collective, Elizabeth? Babes in Arms. Nice double standard, like double meaning there. Sorry, double standard. Um, and yeah, it would basically be uh, are a collective of artist mothers all in Hastings and St. Leonard's area. And it's, yeah, it's been absolutely fantastic. We've got such a talented group of artists that are involved. A real mixture, like there's loads of painters, but it's photographers, there's live performers, um, poets, everything. It's, it's, um, it's, it's amazing. And I'm extremely proud of us and what we've done so far. And is it a physical group where you meet up on a regular basis meet up all the time um i mean we we all live within a five minute radius of each other and is that do you meet up to create or converse both so we do just social things but then we also do like for example like we'll do we did dinner the other like a poetry dinner the other day but we all nice. sort of, um and then we've done like live gigs together and we've done other, other times it's just um for example actually when we were at hastings contemporary this weekend we were doing like four of us but like painting together um just in the day and that was just so nice so yeah we try and um it's it's a real support network and we just um we give advice on each other's work and stuff and like if there's any opportunities for artist mothers coming up or residencies or anything like that, we're constantly sharing and supporting each other and it's just great to have that network and give a platform and support to people that because we you know it's, it's just so hard i feel like women generally speaking in the industry are already at such a disadvantage um I mean, you just literally have to look at any of the figures to, you know, the statistics of, of the main galleries to see that. But being a parent on top of that is just extra hard because, yeah, you miss out on so many opportunities like residency yeah. and like just even the luxury of going to art openings, which always clash with kids' bedtimes. And, you know, or like they're often in the city and it's hard to get up to and get away. So we're just making it happen for ourselves, basically, and like making spaces and exhibitions where the kids can come and it's all accessible. And we run workshops as well for um, parents down here and, and kids. So, yeah, we're just trying to rewrite it and make it work for us, basically. And it's great because we're stronger together. There's like, yeah. like 25 of us. And, you know, I wouldn't be able to have right now anyway, maybe down the line, hopefully, <laughs> like a solo show at Hastings Contemporary or Delaware or Towner. But together, we're stronger, you know, and it's great. Yeah. It's nice to, to have that. And I always there's a saying where it's like you want to be surrounded by people that would mention your name in a room full of opportunities. And that's what I feel we have. Oh, nice. It's great. Going back to your work personally, is there a piece that you've created that's got the strongest emotional connection? That's a good question. Well, actually, the, the painting I did for the last Babes and Arms show um, was, was like that because it was a very rare occasion where I painted people. It was me and my two sons. And it was my eldest son meeting my youngest son for the first time from the photograph. So that held a lot of uh, of clout. Also, um, there's two ones I've done of chair with chairs, um, which <laughs> doesn't sound like they'd be much. They're in those, for me, they are because they're just like I'm looking at them. I'm like, oh, it just, it's to me, it's just such a symbol of having some time to yourself yeah, and like, yeah. longing for that peace. Like to me, they're the most peaceful things that I paint. It's just like an empty chair because it's like just particularly when it's like by the beach. Like, oh, just longing for that time and headspace again. Um, and there's also a couple that I've done where I've painted still lifes where they've been from pots that my friends have created. Like if I've got a good friend called Kelly Jessamine who creates these amazing pots. Um, also, I've done some like Richard Woods and people like that. And it's nice to, I like painting from things that are also already created by my friends. I mean, you mentioned there about painting a chair. I don't think I've looked at a 
painting of a chair <laughs> and not made a story in my mind yeah. of the comfort of the chair, the positioning of the chair, who sat in the chair, who it belongs to. That narrative runs through when you see a chair. It's, as I say, I don't think there's ever been a chair I've looked at where it, I haven't made a story in my own mind about it. Amazing. I love that. Exactly. Yeah. And you can, I, I, I guess like I just, my whole narrative of what I try and do is I, tr I want the person looking at it to be able to, to want to be in that painting and to yeah. visualize themselves there. Um, and whatever it is, that, you know, whether it's a floral, whether it's still life, whether it's, yeah, whether it's chairs, if it's a, a seascape or a building, whatever it is, I just want people to feel like they can jump into that and looking at it just takes them away from their day-to-day -day monotonous life for a moment. Oh, perfect. And we've we've spoke about babes in arms and and exhibitions and showing together. If there was five artists, past and present, what would your ideal group show be? Um, Matisse, obviously. Perfect. Um, uh, Lois Dodd. Um, uh, how many is that? Maybe Pierre Bonnard. He's the like, most amazing. Um, like some of his garden scenes are so great. Yeah. Um, maybe also probably Alex Katz. I really nice. like yeah. um, some of his, but the dan the landscapes that he's done are really great. I think they would sit quite well together. Or Tal R. I love Tal R so much. Yeah, well. I know it's a, a big name to throw at someone, but when I first saw your artwork, mm. Matisse come to mind. Obviously, because of the colour and and that feel of the of the Mediterranean, you know. Yeah, for sure. Like, I think for me as well, what is, um, I think my, it's the looseness that I use actually. A lot of, I, I try and keep things quite um, impressionistic and quite um, raw. And I, I really like visible brush strokes and like, I like pencil mark still being there and just like, just capturing an essence of something without overdoing it, you know? And I guess that's a lot of what he does. Um, it's not very, it's very, and that whole, particularly, with phobism it was very much you know just yeah an sort of an impression of it and um, changing the colors around and that's what I'm yeah I'm quite drawn I'm drawn to that but then equally I'm you know I, you could equally say I'm inspired by people like Saitwombly and Lee Krasner just because they do like the who you know the whole abstract expressionist scene just the the looseness of that and the freedom yeah. of that, I think I can see it in my work I, it's probably it's not as obvious but I can I can see that and the process of how I've got to where my style is now is definitely went through a phase though more like that well I absolutely love the freedom of the brushstroke in an artwork and I don't paint much but when I do that's how I would like to paint and I absolutely cannot because <laughs> I would have to precisely put that loose right um, <laughs> brush so it's, it's not loose I just try to work to make it look loose yeah. and I, I zoomed in on one of yours a little yeah. while ago and it was um, like Venetian blinds. Do you remember that one okay. over a, is it a cheese plant they're called? And and because it was the shadows that caught me and, and oh, this is, I know this is going to sound a bit odd, but the, the way that you caught the edge of the, the blinds, the way they was tipping down. And I've zoomed in on that just to see the brush strokes. And yeah, I, I, I get super envious when someone is so good at doing a loose brush, brush stroke because I, I just so love to be able to do it myself. I'm just quite an impatient person. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I don't know the patience is really ridiculous. Um, Brilliant. And no, it's just I, I just get enjoyment of being like I just I'm just like quite a quick kind of fran yeah frantic person. I can't I can't sit and do something really slow and, and um, perfect. And I I don't like things something that's too perfect. Like I I deliberately, without a shadow of a doubt, like I said, I'll leave pencil marks in or I'll leave gaps in the background, like really visible big brush strokes. And I always paint a back color. So then when the next layer I do, like it blends in so you can see the brush strokes really clearly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I like that a lot. I, I don't like anything to look, um, I want it to look painted, you know? I want people to, I want it to have that raw um, quality to it and people able to see um, that it's, yeah, that it's a painting and, and see the brush strokes and have an, an edible quality, I guess that would be. Like, um, I was really obsessed when I used to do more portraiture like with like Lucy and Freud and like Auerbach and they have really thick textural brush marks. And um, I, I do work in a lot flatter way now, but I still try, I think there's an element of that still in my work. A friend of mine, I was looking at one of his larger paintings and I'd seen the sketch of it before. 
I looked at the painting of it when it was on, on show him in the West End, and I could see all the grid lines where he squared it up. It was only on one section, but quite a big section, mm. size of a dinner plate. <laughs> and I said to him, like, why did you leave the, the squaring up pencil marks in? He went, because I squared up with a pencil. <laughs> and I was like, perfect, yeah. I, I admired the bravery of, yeah. of leaving those marks in because I'm not brave enough myself to do it. Yeah, I guess you do have to be quite brave to be like, right, okay, this is finished now. Because I think I just, oh, yeah, I, if I ever feel like, I, I still want it to have a, a, a good energy. I guess that's that's what it is. I like it to feel kind of alive and like and energetic. And, I and it does it, so. It does so, that's for sure. Oh, thank you. But I thought, yeah, I think if, if I overwork something i always really regret it i've, I've learned very like now when to stop and i'm quite i'm quite good at that I'm, I'm quite good at leaving things before i ever do it but originally like yeah i was um when i was younger i definitely used to get really frustrated by I, I could almost spend way too long just you know i remember kind of in like art exams and like right well you've got eight hours so you've got to fucking fill it and it's like okay but this is probably done like three hours in yeah and then you mess it up um so yeah, I don't know. I try and just keep a loop. When you've decided to stop on a painting, do you definitely stop there? Do you never go back and No, I never go back. Unless I've like really clocked something that's like, or I'm painting next to it and I accidentally put a paint spot. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do you do you assign your artworks? I sign always on the back, yeah. So much on. I've had five exhibitions this month and it's just been a bit intense. So I've been I've bought this like day lamp. So I'm just sort of like, I'm putting the kids down, <laughs> surface out of like, like, basically falling asleep, like with my kids, like in the dark, about 8 p.m., come out, and then I go into my studio, so <laughs> just like white, white. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, cool, this is my vibe till like one, two now, okay, fine, let's just crack on. But, and yeah. what, what do you reckon you'd like to do if you wasn't an artist? I do music. Of course, it was a pointless question. Really, <laughs> I, I thought that before I even said it, I know the answer to this. If someone would allow me to do it and actually pay me money to do music, I would do that. But um, I don't know. I, I guess I just, if, if, no, realistically, I would just be working in the art world for sure. I was going to say, given the freedom, would you be a, a visual artist that made music or a musician that painted? <laughs> No, I think it's for me, it's works the right way around. Like when I was younger and had more energy, I liked being on tour and doing music, like being a musician that painted, but now definitely I prefer painting, just do music for, for fun. It's just too, it just suits my, yeah, my lifestyle a lot better. Art in general is probably a lot healthier for me. And <laughs> <laughs> in every capacity, it keeps me a lot calmer. And uh, But it's a solitude thing. That's what I'm saying. So I, I feel like I need music for the social aspect. Um, but that's why it was really nice painting the other day with like some people from my collective because we had like a bunch of us in the studio together and that was nice. And have you got anything coming up? Yeah, well, so I've got the show um, Coastal Calm, which is opening for 99 Projects, my um, first solo show with them, or first solo show in London, actually. Um, it's opening on the, well, opening night is the 23rd of March and um, it's on from the 23rd of March till the 24th of April. And then I am in an exhibition at Home House London, which is opening, I think, on the 4th of April, which is um, a collaboration with Offshoot Arts, Cura Art, um, A Space for Art, um, and that's running for six months. Uh, and then I'm currently in an exhibition at with Stella Door Gallery down here, which is um, Massive Weapons of Massive Destruction, I think, which is with Shuby and a bunch of other pe really cool people from my... That's a good gallery, isn't it? It's great. It's really fun. We had it, oh God, the opening was so dangerously fun. I just like, actually, all, all the owner had was Bacardi out. And I was like, <laughs> juices. But I'm like, I'm not going to have juice. That's just going to like curdle my stomach. So I just, we were just like a cup of rum. It was great. Brilliant. <laughs> so yeah, so I've got that. And then I've also got one coming up with Art for Charity Collective. Um, it's a collaboration with the Jigsaw Foundation, the fashion brand. Uh, they're really great to work with Art for Charity Collective. I've done quite a lot of work for them. Um, and like a huge percentage of the sales always goes to a relevant charity, um, like Choose Love and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, and then I've just had this exhibition with Babes and Arms at Hastings Contemporary last weekend, um, which was lots of fun. What did you have on at the Hastings Contemporary? So it was a very like shotgun um, exhibition uh, for it to be in the International Women's Day or week, I suppose. Um, and there were new works by all, most of the members of the collective. Um, and there's also some pieces from a company called Procreate Projects who also champion artist mothers. Yeah. And um, we had, yeah, four of us were live painting. Um, one of us was doing 
some live music and uh, then there were two poetry performances and it was great. We we're just in there all day and people could just come in, watch us and dance along and chat and meet us all. And it was amazing. We had like so many kids there. It was great. I mean, it's quite, <laughs> I was trying to do a painting and um, it's like my camp, like the easel was just getting constantly knocked by sort of <laughs> come up and make them off, whatever, but it was fine. I have a, my friend's baby actually sort of made some initial marks on the canvas, so they were all right. But then as I got going, I kind of was like, nope, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it was cool. It was great. We, it was just so nice. We just, everyone felt really inspired. All the kids came away being like, yeah, I want to go. I want to be an artist now. I want to paint. And I think all the mums just felt really supportive and uh, it was wicked. And it was nice to see, yeah, such a big turnout, I guess, for um, something for International Women's Day. Nice. And the, the coastal calm that you've got, got at 99 Projects, mm -hmm. I, I love that space. As soon as you walk in there, you've got the, the green at the other end. It's, yeah. per, it's like the perfect gallery for my work. I love it. I exhibited there last summer with um, another artist called Lucy Smallbone, who has a similar kind of different style to me, but similar kind of subject matters. And um, yeah, so this has been my first solo show and I'm really excited to work with them again. Uh, the last exhibition the summer was great. And yeah, they have this big glass windows and lots of greenery outside and yeah, it's, it's just like going in entering Narnia. You're in <laughs> you're in a London suburb with train station and buses. You walk in and you've got the calm of not quite countryside, but um it, it's as if you've got a green space 30 feet away. Yeah, it's amazing. So it's um it's lovely. I'm mean, looking forward to having this body of works in that space for sure. Um and I've got yeah, it's quite a lot of pieces and it's gonna be it's gonna be great. It just really explores um the paintings, everything in there just explores my kind of life here um, and finding finding the calm moments. And uh, yeah, so it's a mixture of still lifes, um, seascapes and um, uh, buildings and palm trees and basically, yeah, capturing my, my seaside life really in, in painting. Perfect. Mm. And how can anyone find what you're doing, be it um, a website or social media? Uh, yeah, so my Instagram is Elizabeth Power Art, and my website is I think Elizabeth Dash Power, um, and I'm on various other all the you know my various representations and galleries and stuff will have links as well. But um, yeah, I mean Instagram is generally the best way to find me because that's when I'll, I'll upload all my kind of works in progress and videos and stuff, and that's kind of I think where I'm where I'm there the most. And my, I do update my website as much as I possibly can, but. Um, yeah, Instagram is probably the most, uh, e the easiest and quickest way to reach me for sure. Well, Elizabeth, that's all my questions asked. Oh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. It's good speaking to you again. I Last time I saw you, you gave me a lift home after we recorded a podcast with the Delphian Gallery. And um, bless you, you were like, I'll drop you home. It's really late. I'm, I'm like, well, you live in Essex and I live <laughs> in northwest London. Um, bless you. Well, you were a real gentleman that, that night. So thank you. <laughs> but that, um, yeah, I, I absolutely love that evening. It was really fun. Um, it was I guess really good. For context, we did. So I used to run a podcast called the Artfully Podcast, um, and we did a Christmas special together. Also alongside, it was Delphine Gallery, and what was there was another one, wasn't there? I can't believe that's it. Um, and we just all got pissed and recorded and chatted about art. It was great. Well, as we're talking about that, is it likely to come back? Uh, yes, I well, Jesse and I would love to very much, um, but I think it's just yeah, we're hoping to do a few specials maybe throughout the year. Um, it's just very much a time a time issue. I miss it. I miss it a lot, but um, hopefully we'll do a couple of yeah, couple of sort of one offs. It was very fun just chatting art with your best mate for like an hour. It's it's fun because yeah. <laughs> Louise from Jealous has got her one down in Margate, hasn't she? Yeah. In Liminal. I need to. I need to listen to that. Yeah, that was pretty good. I was listening to her with um, Sarah Maple. Oh, cool. Um, I love Sarah Maple. She's great. Well, great. well, again, thank you for your time, Elizabeth. And oh, yeah, yeah, all the very best down there. I quite envy you. Well, let me know if you, if you want to come down. We can, we can hang. <laughs> oh, definitely. Thank you very much. I'll see you later. Thank you. Bye. Well, hope you enjoyed that episode of the Ministry of Arts podcast. So we wasn't dictated to by advertisers, we decided from the offset to go ad-free, which means obviously we had to self-fund. So we set up the Ministry of Arts Patreon page. And without that support, we would not be able to produce this podcast. 
So if you like what you hear and you're able to support the podcast, just go over to the Ministry of Arts Instagram profile. You'll find a Linktree drop-down box, which will direct you straight to our Patreon page. And for the price of a cup of coffee, you can help keep us growing week by week. But if you're not able to do that, that's fine because this content is free for everyone. But leaving a review on whichever platform you listen to your podcast, that really does help us get noticed and anyone else looking for an art podcast. Or even giving us a positive shout out on your social media. Everything is appreciated. But either way, thanks for listening. And until next week, sad art.